Lebanon is a land of the Bible where Jesus Christ lived and preached, a country that through the centuries fulfilled its mission of statehood, where people of many faiths could be sure of a peaceful and tolerant coexistence. Here, in an all-embracing harmony, dwelled believers of the Eastern Catholic Churches, Maronites, Melachites, Armenians, Syrians, Chaldeans, and of the Latin Rite, in unison with all the breakaway believers of the Muslim Communion, Sunnis, Shias, Druzes, Alawites, and Ismailis. Lebanon always welcomed groups who had trouble surviving elsewhere or who were persecuted. That is why today 18 communities still continue to survive in our country. Lebanon considers this fact to be a message of responsibility for the Middle East. Religious diversity is decisive in shaping the spiritual and cultural richness of this region. In that very cornucopia of religious communities, however, one also finds the seeds that from 1975 to 1991 contributed to the breakdown of peace and unity in the Lebanese state. There was a war between Christians and Muslims, and people killed in the name of their religion. People were provoked to state their religious allegiances, and thus pushed into joining the fighting in defense of their faith. The civil war that lasted 16 years and ended in 1991 left Lebanon in ruins. Surrounding countries began to meddle in the internal affairs of this land of cedars, aiming to promote religious animosities amongst the Lebanese. These intruders saw their intervention as an opportunity to achieve their expansionist aims. Ultimately, Lebanon saw its territory occupied twice over by Israeli and Syrian forces. With my parents, we never regarded this as an internal conflict, but rather as a means for outside forces to destroy Lebanon. Because we had a great social agreement in this country before the war, which, however difficult that might be to imagine, was destroyed. The Lebanese war brought death to 150,000 people and losses estimated at over 150 billion US dollars. The war also forced many Christians to emigrate. Many Christians left the country. Of the 1,100,000 that did so, only 300,000 have returned. In other words, 800,000 Lebanese Christians live abroad. That is a large number for a total population of under 4 million people. The signing of the Taif Agreement in 1991 is regarded as the turning point in Lebanon's civil war. In accordance with the National Peace Charter, Muslims gained the upper hand as the Maronites lost their dominant political position. The war eventually ended, pretty much because the non-Christian faction triumphed. Even after the signing of the peace agreement at Taif, we continue to feel that. They said that everybody would be given an equal chance. Posts that were occupied by Christians before the war would, in line with the Taif agreement, now be equally accessible to Christians and Muslims. But that is theory. The reality is that posts previously held by Christians are now quickly passing into Muslim hands.
As the Lebanese suffer the consequences of both the political and economic crisis brought about by the war, they strive to regain their former stability and strengthen the internal workings of the state. With the ending of the war, Christians have become a minority in a Muslim society, a minority concerned that an encroaching Islamization of the state and increasing corruption is making cooperation between Christians and Muslims at the executive level difficult. Many Christians have decided to emigrate in search of a better life elsewhere. All of this happens because of the economic crisis, but first and foremost because Christians have ceased to believe that this country is for them any longer. That a young man leaves his country in search of work in Europe in order to provide some sort of income for his family is quite normal. But alas, there are those, Christians, who leave for good. There is, however, a ray of hope. Christians who decide to stay strive to build bridges of understanding with Muslims at the most basic level, in everyday matters that affect everyday people. Christian schools contribute significantly to this effort. We want our children to be brought up in a spirit of fellowship, respect for religious differences, respect for different faiths and different political views. They are free. We would like to create unity. In other words, love of one's country and of fellow human beings, and love of human values that we believe in and that surely are the same for all. That is what we try to instill in our students. Christian schools are opening their doors to children from Muslim families and state schools likewise to children from Christian families. Recent estimates indicate that 225,000, a quarter of all Lebanese students, attend the 325 Catholic schools. Of these, 20% are Muslim and 72% Christian. First friendships begin at school. I used to be in a Christian school, but now I attend our Muslim Christian one. I think diversity is important, to live amongst different people, because it influences an individual's personal development, because the value of a human being is not based only on personal faith and tradition. The work religious sisters carry out in hospitals also greatly contributes to the friendly and peaceful coexistence of Christians and Muslims. In a spirit of Christian love, they bring relief to all who are ill and suffering. We are citizens of this country, just like everyone else. I think that our presence has always been viewed as positive in the eyes of our fellow citizens. Christian or not. In some regions, for example in Baalbek and Maslava, we serve Muslims. Lebanese are especially devoted to the Mother of God, but not only Christians turn to her with their problems, but also Muslims. Above all, in May, but also in October, we show our devotion in every church. The priest in the neighbouring parish, together with other parishes, organises a procession in her honour. We pass through the village, and on reaching the hospital, we build an altar. Patients who are able to move, on crutches, nurses, doctors, visiting parents, 